I wanted to hate this book, Boy's Life by Robert R. McCammon. Really wanted to hate it. I was all fired up to just hate read it. And you might be saying, what did Robert McCammon ever do to you to make you want to hate his book? He's never done anything to you personally to affect your personal life. And you're under no obligation to read it. No one's making you. So why would you want to hate his book? Well, at the time I came across Boy's Life, I had gleaned Robert McCammon's career. And from what I had gleaned, he seemed to be committing the ultimate unforgivable sin that a writer can commit, which is plagiarism. He seemed to be ripping off the career and the plots of Stephen King. And if you saw my Needful Things review, you know how I felt about Stephen King back in the day when I came across Boy's Life. So, not only was he ripping off Stephen King, it was at a time when he was getting a lot of applause and pats on the back for doing so. And King was just getting derided publicly. I mean, he was making millions. He could have retired in 1980 and never had to worry about money again. But to see him still putting so much effort into his books that I loved, and to see the critics just bash him, and the movies get horrible reviews, and his peers shun him, it just didn't seem fair at all. Is this literary world really so unfair that the leader of a generation of books can just be crucified and a ripoff artist can do cheap imitations and just get the world given to him, the world of praise and applause and awards and best-selling and everything you can hope for as an author. They Thirst by Robert McCammon seemed to be a ripoff of Salem's Lot, plot and synopsis. Swan Song, likewise, a ripoff of The Stand, the original version. And now Boy's Life seemed to be a ripoff of It by Stephen King, in the way that, from what I understood without reading anything by McCammon, it was the idea of the child's imagination make thing, makes things come true in the real world. So I had dual reasons for wanting to read it. On the one hand, I had to satisfy that curiosity. Is this guy really just making a name by ripping off Stephen King? I mean, a whole generation of authors in the 80s seemed to be doing that. But this guy seemed to be getting the most positive attention for it. And also, just for the good old-fashioned curiosity of, is it a good book? Is it worthy of its awards and all of its positive reviews and bestseller status? Or... Am I going to just find out that everything I suspected is true? That it's just all the hundreds of five-star reviews on Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com are a fad audience. They're going to like this just because it's not something else. And they're going to move on to the next thing as soon as that comes along. Am I going to find out that the multiple awards that it was given to was just a political game? That all award ceremonies is just a small group of people wanting to give their friends a public pat on the back. And they award books that are not worthy, and that will just prove that the world isn't unfair. It's just that certain people are making it unfair, and it's all just a popularity game. So I had to satisfy those two juxtaposing curiosities and gave Boy's Life a try. So read the opening pages, and... Okay, before the story actually starts. It's a five-star opening. This writing is very good. But it seems to be giving away everything that's going to happen in the next 570 pages. Isn't this admittedly good writing, making the rest of the story predictable? That's a long time to be predictable. But good writing, so I'll carry on. And now we get into the first chapter, and... Okay, these are some great images, and I'm really sympathetic about this family dynamic, and these are some illuminating observations about life and the town he lives in and the family he's growing up in. And the people are tugging at my emotions, 
But isn't everything else afterwards just going to be predictable from that opening few pages? Let's keep reading and find out. So chapter two is more of the same as chapter one, kind of tugging at me and making good observations and good images, making me care about the people involved. And then we get to chapter three. And chapter three has a twist that just proves none of the brilliant writing that I've come across so far was giving away anything in the story. As a matter of fact, now, everything that's been set up so far can go anywhere. I don't know where any of this is going to go. Anything can happen. And damn it, now I'm hooked. I can't hate read this anymore. I'm enjoying it. I'm starting to see what all the hype was about. This guy's not a plagiarist. He's not ripping off Stephen King. This story is wholly his own. Unless he's ripping off someone else I've never come across before, but... Nevertheless, what a journey it turned out to be. A big kaleidoscopic plot full of zany people. The writing is playful, and the moments when the different elements kind of fall together are just magical. I mean, so many people are introduced in this town of Zephyr where it takes place that you can't predict how these different lives are going to weave in and out of each other and where they're going to come together. So when they do, it's not only unexpected, but it's also perfect in that like one person will be introduced in say chapter seven and you will be sympathetic to their situation and who they are as a person, but they will have this unresolved issue and you'd be like, Oh, I hope that gets resolved. And then later on in chapter 14, Another different person will get introduced and you'll be sympathetic to their plight and you'll enjoy them as a person. You'll be like, oh, I hope they, their thing gets resolved. And in the, in the interim, other people will be introduced similarly. So then later on in chapter 21, the person from chapter 7 and the person from chapter 14, their two stories meet and kind of come together in this way that you didn't see coming and is perfect. And you're like, yes. And that happens all throughout the book, these different moments where you go, yes, and the, it runs the gamut of emotions for everything you can want from a reading experience. Where the things come together, it can be sad, it can be bittersweet, it can be funny, there can be moments where you go, yeah! And just everything you can want from a reading experience is what happens in this book. It's... I don't want to go as far as saying it's the best book you'll ever read at everything, at every element, but it rates high in almost every element. Every reason that you can want from a book, it rates high. So, where it's an example of where literature really excels in the way that the writing kind of hypnotizes you into the experience of the story and how that happens in Boy's Life where I said the writing is playful the images and observations that McCammon makes kind of hypnotizes you into the mindset of a kid and their view of the world. And I, I don't mean like naive view of the world with no experience, but the whole story is about recapturing the magic of childhood. And it makes you see through the eyes of a kid where every detail has endless possibilities and everything is full of hope or terror. Like I said, it runs the gamut of emotions and that, that, sh that shadow you see under the water, that could be anything. As an adult, you might say, oh, that's just some junk that was thrown in there last year. But as a kid, that can be anything, good or bad. That sound you hear outside your bedroom window at night, that could be anything, good or bad. But as a kid, you might say, oh, that's just the loose gutter banging against the house. But as a kid, that can be anything. And that's what the writing really taps into and hypnotizes you into seeing through the eyes of a kid because the whole thing is about recapturing the magic of childhood through the eyes of this kid in his life through this year. And all of these different people who are weaving in and out of the story in this year in this town where the kid lives, and the different moments where they kind of come together and then go their separate ways again, all of that is conducive to the experience of recapturing the magic of childhood. 
So it's just great. Great experience. And as for those magical moments, rather than ripping off Stephen King, which is what I originally suspected, far from it. This is Robert McCammon's magnum opus. This is the ultimate work of his career. He had been a published author for 12 years up to that point. And after, afterwards, I would become more familiar with his other works. I would go back and backtrack to the previous 12 years. And it turns out that in Boy's Life, he took novel-length plots that would fill most of his earlier books, and he would kind of whittle them down to their most powerful and distinctive elements and make them into just a subplot. So this book is almost like a collection of subplots that were distilled from full-length novel plots of his earlier works. So you have the Nazi plot from uh, Wolf Sour. That's just a subplot in Boy's Life. You have the alien plot from Stinger. That's a subplot in Boy's Life. You have the sorcery, wizardry subplots and the monstrous creatures and the family dynamics. All of those were full-length novel plots, and he's whittled them down to their most important elements to be a subplot. So all these powerful subplots are weaving in and out and meeting at different points where you get different results as a reader and as a reading experience. So it's fantastic. And... From wanting to hate read this book, this book took me on about the furthest journey you can. From wanting to hate it all the way to giving it the highest compliment I can possibly give a book that I haven't written. And out of all the books that I've read, this is the one book where if I had to pick one that I wished I had written, it would be Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. So there's no greater compliment that a writer can give to another, and I'm giving that to Boy's Life. So, yeah, check it out. It's a good one.